yeah, we can start with the new pipeline development. So there were several people this time working on new pipelines. I'll share the screen to show the slides that they've prepared. Do you need to enable everyone to unmute themselves so they can present? Maybe you've done that already. I've taken care of that. Perfect. So, Kamal, if you would like to present. All right, or I'll make just a brief introduction. So we had four projects for this hackathon and this one was focusing on developing new pipelines. And those were the people, the group members that were involved in, in developing new pipelines for NF Core. And we have, first of all, the QTL map pipeline. Is there somebody here that was involved in the development of this pipeline that would like to give it a quick introduction for the rest? You can just unmute yourselves. All right, there doesn't seem to be anybody right now, but just a, a, big, a, a brief description. So the QTL map pipeline uh, was proposed by Norlan Kerimov from the University of Tartu. And it's supposed to automatize uh, quantitative trait logic mapping of, uh, so the connection between genotype and molecular phenotypic data. So that's quite an exciting pipeline to have alone. So we hope to see more developments this week of this one. We have also the RIFSIC pipeline. Yeah, so I can mention that briefly. So this is basically uh, a pipeline that I've been developing previously in SnakeMake and for various reasons wanted to convert it into NF Core. Uh, many of those reasons are all the bells and whistles that you guys already have implemented and uh, everything that is very nice about NF Core that you have uh, streamlined everything and everything is already sort of working in a very reproducible kind of manner. And so, yeah, I don't see much of the space, but basically this is a project uh, collaboration uh, with uh, the Mats Nilsson's group in Stockholm University, and they have developed a new method for um, highly multiplexed uh, RNA isolation free RNA-seq. So uh, I'm writing the pipeline, uh, the bioinformatic part, of this pipeline for them. And uh, it's relatively simple in terms of gene expression, QC, and uh, that sort of thing, uh, except that it's got lots of steps of uh, splitting and gathering samples and uh, needs some more advanced metadata uh, in order to be able to run because it also wants differential expression and some downstream analyses after the sort of standard stuff that the end of core pipelines are already used doing and uh, the weird thing about this is, i guess is that since the group hasn't really published this yet this is still a private repo and i'm not really allowed to share much of it uh, i was given permission for this uh, hackathon to share if anybody wants to look at it uh, and uh, help out, but uh, seeing as we're all very busy, I've been mostly sitting working on it uh, by myself and uh, just trying to get it ready for 
and of course inclusion once the group actually publishes their paper, which they are in the process of starting to write now. And this, uh, yeah, I, I started it with DSL-1 and has since uh, started working with DSL-2, not with any modules and stuff, but just the syntax. So quite keen on seeing what the, the modules can be doing and enjoy the talks uh, so far today, so yeah. Okay, perfect. Eric, thanks for this sh short summary of what, what the pipeline is doing. If there are any interested people also in contributing, then just get in contact with Eric. We have also the SimSaker pipeline. I think Kamil mentioned that he would be willing to present it himself. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kamil, and we have this time we have a team for a uh, huge, well, quite a larger team from Argen. Uh, me, Pavel, Daniel, and Tomek, we are working on SimSaker pipeline, which main aim is to uh, allow an end user who has set of annotated antibodies, for example, in a form of CSV file. Uh, to look up for antibodies in a reference set, uh, which are, for example, matching annotations uh, such as VGINs, canonical folds, or other uh, annotations. Uh, can you go to the next slide? And uh, this reference uh, may be, for example, one of the publicly available databases like OAS database or our own uh, antibody database, which we have. And the main problem, which uh, we commonly uh, have to deal with is the, is this uh, particular sequence was already seen uh, somewhere uh, in our data uh, or any other similar uh, antibodies, have we found them already or not? And this two, uh, it should be simple and uh, should give this first overview over particular set of uh, new sequences. And the SimSeeker is named from the Maltese word, uh, Hawk, and it simulates the activity of Hawk in find, finding what it seeks. Yeah, don't ask why this name was chosen. Uh, can you go to the next one? So our progress, uh, well, uh, all four of us yesterday spent a uh, huge amount of time on uh, task definition and architecture design. And I think that we are ready for actual development. If you can switch to the next one. In the meantime, uh, Daniel was uh, writing a wrapper for Paracel tool. Uh, this, this tool uh, we uh, would like to use for actual sequence alignments. And uh, if you can go to the next one. Uh, also, in the meantime, when we are brainstorming, when in the meantime, uh, well, we were brainstorming, Tomek also uh, started our repository with NF Core template. I hope that one is in DSL2. Yes, it is. Oh, great. So we will be uh, developing this pipeline in second version of uh, Nextflow domain specific language. And uh, right now, Tomek is working on module which will validate our input data. Uh, oh, there is also one additional slide, I guess. Yeah, and currently our pipeline is residing in a private GitHub repository. Uh, but of course, if anyone is interested, we will be happy to, to share it. Uh, we, well, we don't have clear uh, restrictions, um, but we also don't have any uh, permissions to publish it yet. So, you know, uh, we came with new idea for, for our uh, common problems and we just use this hackathon to to make something new, which will be helpful for, for us. Okay, thank you. All right, perfect. Thank you, Kamil. 
Um, does somebody have some questions towards this pipeline? Please jump in yourselves. All right, so we can now continue with the GWAS pipeline. If there's somebody here that would like to introduce it. I can introduce it. So uh, it's a genome-wide association study pipeline. And uh, I, think, I think this is quite new in the NFCore world because all other pipelines are sort of sequencing focused. Uh, and this is at least a traditional has been starting from the genotype microarrays and then uh, doing this genome wide association study. Um, so we have been in the Slack channel talking about this addition for some time. And I thought it would be nice to initiate it now during the hackathon. So we, we have been three people uh, discussing and talking about it. Now we, uh, this, yeah, this morning we dropped down to two. Um, um, yeah, what to say? The progress is that it's, uh, it is in the NF core repository. Um, I, only with what the, the NF core tools um, create uh, gives. So, but we will try to add some test data and get all the checks and so on uh, running and then create the basics, basics for the for an, yeah, a basic TWAS. That's the ambition for the hackathon at least. So now, any questions on that? Okay, sounds great. Um, hopefully now that the pipeline is already on the NFCO repository, there will also be some further contributors. Otherwise, yeah. I as you yeah, exactly. There are, like, I think, 18 people in the GWAS channel. So that showed interest. So should, someone should show up. <laughs> Yes, it definitely raised some interest. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's it for the new pipelines team so far. We can continue with the existing mm, pipelines. I think there's my, the cage sack should be there after this. Yes. Ah, okay, perfect. Sorry for that. Um, yes, so. Uh, my goal for this hackathon, or one of the goals, is to uh, write the documentation for CageSec, which is feature complete, at least from my side now. So if I have the documentation, I think it's good for a release. Um, and if I go to the next slide, I finished a readme, and then before writing the um, other, the like the usage, a documentation or like it's already there. I just need to update it and and fix some some things there. I decided to go to an issue in the tools uh, repository, website repository, where we where there was the idea that we could use the parameters in the um, JSON schema to automate the usage part of the section. So now I switched over. Um, uh, over to the to this, so I'm now split in, in two projects. All right, um, sounds great uh, progress so far for this pipeline. Um, it's been one that it has been already up for a while in the NF Core repository, right? Yes, yes, it's I think at least a year. Yeah, great. So let's see if we can. Uh, push it for release this week and if you can also find some further contributors here. Yes, I would be very happy for new hands and eyes on it. Yeah, perfect. So we have yet another pipeline, Pop Bomb Pipeline by Matthias Marquardt. So are you here available, Matthias, and willing to present it? Maybe he's not, but I can say a couple of words about words about this pipeline. So, um, pop bomb is apparently an acronym for prediction of phenotype based on metagenome, and it's supposed to be a pipeline that includes some metagenomics analysis uh, as well as some machine learning 
training, which is quite exciting as we don't have yet um, NF core pipeline that includes a machine learning process. So we'll see how this evolves. And I think now we are done with the uh, new pipelines hackathon project. So we'll move forward with the existing pipelines hackathon project. Let yeah. me share the slides. We have the, the deep variant pipeline. I think that uses machine learning. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> That's true. And up to an earlier comment, we do we do have a few uh, non-genomics pipelines as well. We have a few proteomics and there's a, an image image analysis pipeline as well. But yeah, they are mostly genomics so far. Okay, I'm just finding the other slides. All right, so this is the next um, packet hackathon uh, project team, which consisted in, in developing existing NFCore pipelines. And the group members are collected in this light. They were working on many different pipelines. Um, so maybe they can also jump in themselves and explain the projects that they were working in. So first of all, we have the NFCore eager, somebody willing to present this one. So the main developments for this pipeline was finishing remaining structural changes. I think there were also some problems on running it on AWS, which hopefully will be solved now. And uh, finishing documentation and preparing basically the pipeline for the 2.2 release. There is also the NFCore SAREC pipeline. So Maxim, I'm sorry, but you cannot hide yourself. So you present. Uh, okay, I'm here. Yes. So sorry, I was uh, I was not on Zoom, so I just joined right now. So yes, so we've been working on Sarek, uh, fixing uh, issues and updating the pipeline, and uh, we've been work. We just started working on DSL2, but I guess you will talk more about that on the next uh, on the next project. Uh, can you change slide? So yes, so we created a Sarek team of core developer on Slack and on GitHub. Uh, we fix a control freak uh, issue. Uh, we fix two issue for uh, no, we fix one issue for Mutect two. Uh, we added one option for Mutect two, and we switch from uh, BWA to BWA main two. So I'm hoping we should have a lot of uh, improvement and of the a lot of speed up on the on the mapping uh, steps. And that's all for now. So hoping we can be as productive uh, tomorrow. Perfect. Sounds like great developments for Sarek. Then there were some improvements of NFCore Mac as well. Is there somebody here willing to present? Sorry, yes. I have a quick question for Maxime before we go ahead. Do the ind have the indices changed for BWMM2? Uh, no. No, no, they, they, they do, they do uh, say that they provide the exact same result, just uh, faster. So you can still use the old indices, that's not yes. changing? No, no, that, that's what I did at the moment, I haven't changed anything. Okay, cool. But I'll do, of course, more tests, just to be sure. Okay, 
Okay, perfect. So we will move towards the NF core MAC pipeline. So yeah, I could say a few words to this. Um, yeah, uh, Daniel, Maxime and me, we were working on the MAC pipeline. For those who don't know, it's um, a pipeline for assembly, binning and annotation of metagenomes. And it was originally developed by um, Adrian Goulet and Daniel Straub. And yeah, I also started to contributing a bit in the last weeks. And since we added some features such as host read removal and also some parameters to ensure the reproducibility of individual tools, um, we were working already towards a release, which we thought we could uh, push this week as well. So there are a few remaining bugs and uh, we still had to um, address. So Maxime, for example, fixed the memory conversion issue with Spardos. Um, Daniel also worked on uh, the compression of assembly files uh, for the results output file, which uh, reduces the site significantly, and we changed some error handlings. And I'm still working on a problem with the Busco um, process, which is still work in progress. Yeah, that's it. Okay, perfect. Thanks for the for the progress report, Sabrina. Let's see if by the end of the week we can release this 1.1.0. Okay, there's also another pipeline, and of course, DIA proteomics. Can somebody brief us on this one? Uh, yes, maybe I can say a few words. Um, so I created this pipeline a couple of, uh, almost half a year ago, and just as an initial experiment. And um, now I thought I had the time to fix a lot of bugs, um, including template update, uh, the container, which had to be updated. I didn't get very far yet, I had problems with the container, but at least that seems to be fixed for now. And I'm looking forward to get at least the basics running by the end of the week. Okay, perfect, Leon, thanks for the briefing. And that was it for the uh, existing pipelines. So we can move on now to the next hackathon project. So we will continue with the improving NF core framework tools, even though I think this, this hackathon team was not very popular, unfortunately. It was an elite group. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me share the slides. There they are. Yeah, I, I won't talk for too long because we've been talking for a long time already. Um, but yeah, this was this project is about everything NF Core, which is not a pipeline, basically. So um, it's the, the, the Python helper tools and the website and kind of a generic automation. Um, so there's three of us, I think, if you go on the next slide. Yeah, there's me, Stephen, and uh, Matthias. Um, and We've been tackling a few different things. If you can just hop onto the next slide. So uh, we kind of chatted to Stephen yesterday and talked about the kinds of things there are to be done on tools and kind of going through some of the some of the issues. And um, my suggestion was that uh, he kind of starts off with um, uh, some of the kind of more standalone issues, um, which were kind of not necessarily too ingrained and didn't need too much pre-existing knowledge. Uh, so he got started with um, with working on NF Core List. I don't know if he's part of this group here. Um, Steve, I don't know if you want to say anything about this. Uh, yeah. So yeah, like uh, Phil said, I was just going through the, the issues list, and this one about um, the NF Core List uh, showing archived uh, workflows was one of the top ones that I saw. So. It was pretty simple to implement. Um, so yeah, now it does not show archived workflows by default, but you can use this new flag if you want to see them. Thanks. Uh, although simple, it's quite a, 
an important issue actually because uh, these functions that power the NF core list subcommando are actually used by loads of the other parts of the helper tools. So uh, the archive pipelines are trying to be synchronized, for example, which they shouldn't be in other stuff. So this was a good one to get fixed. Yep, next is just sort of generic my work where I've been working on NF core tools. We're, it's been a long time since we've had a release. Every time we say, oh, we'll try and make the next release sooner and it's very difficult to do. <laughs> so. Uh, if you hit on to the next slide, we've been, I've been working through the kind of different issues um, which uh, are pending for the next release of version 1.10 um, of NF Core Tools. Can you just hit next? And again. So um, basically, we have we use GitHub uh, issue milestones to try and group things together so stuff doesn't get mixed, missed. Uh, I bumped a few of them over onto version 1.11 because um, I want to get this release out. Uh, remaining stuff is the big stuff is improving how NF Core Sync works. It's a fairly unknown command. Most of you won't ever need to really run it, um, but it's used by the by the GitHub automation. So when we have a new version of a template, you all get automatic pull requests on all the different NF Core pipelines, uh, proposing hopefully just the updates to the boilerplate code um, and. We run, I completely rewrote this for the last release uh, and it worked fairly well, but there was like a few things where just after it had run, I thought, oh, this stuff could be improved before next time. So I was going through that. Um, and I also looked through the list of pipelines that failed um, last time and, and just vetted them and made sure that they were still, they were ready for the next synchronization. A few of you will have got messages from me where I went through trying to tidy things up. But, so I think we're in a really good place now for the next release. Um, and also the NF Core, so we have Python unit testing for most of the stuff in the NF Core package and absolutely none for NF Core Sync. So I'm just writing a few unit tests for Sync now. Next. All right, this is Matthias. Do you want to jump in, Matthias? Yes, I can. So as teased already in the cage sec, uh, I want to use the JSON schema parameters to generate at least part of the usage documentation. So if you go to uh, your power plan and go to documentation, you will usually see the, the usage and then the output, uh, which are currently rendered from the markdown file. So everything has to be hand written. Um, and at least for the usage, we could, the plan is now uh, to use at least the power meter definitions as, uh, as one part of the documentation. And if you need more, you can still have the, the markdown file attached to, the, to this page. So I got familiar with how the code looks like to generate the sites. And I was like, yeah, sticking out all the parts which should be done. And yeah, I, th I hope I will not follow this XKCD too much for, for this uh, project, but we'll see. Um, just for those who are not familiar with this, uh, this is onto the tying onto a huge new body of work for NF Core, which we haven't mentioned at all yet, which is uh, the JSON schema for pipelines. Don't worry too much if you don't know what we're talking about. Um, I'm going to talk about this in, in quite a bit of depth on my talk on Thursday, where I talk about new things in the NF Core tools package. Um, but basically, yeah, it's, it's a way to um, describe all of the parameters used in a pipeline in a, in a kind of a, uh, com computationally friendly way, if you like, in a structured manner in the JSON schema file. Um, and so we'll be able to have documentation auto-generated from this. So this is, uh, this is really starting to make use of this that Matthias is doing here. It's really good. I think that's it for our group. OK, perfect. So. Thanks for the development and we'll be at your talk on Thursday then to learn more about this. And the last group missing is the next flow DSL2 modules, which I know was a very active group. So I'm gonna share the slides. And does somebody wanna take the lead who was in this team? So the primary focus of the team was working on the DSL2 modules or porting pipelines to Nextflow DSL2. And members were Harshil, Gregor, Jose, and Frederike Hansen. And 
Um, yeah, does somebody of you want to brief on the first slide? Uh, yep. So, so this is this has actually been quite a bit of fun, and from from the previous talk, um, it, it's been a bit of a learning curve really the past couple of days. It's been intense, but I think we've needed to be put in this situation to actually make any progress with DSL two, um, and you know, so now we're sort of in the fire pit, uh, as it were, and so. The idea that we took was that we would attempt to implement a pipeline end to end because it gives us a particular focus. Um, and also it'd be able to help us identify limitations and, and fixes and, and other things when, you know, you, you can get, I mean, I personally had to do things possibly in a messy way with DSL one, but with DSL two, all of that will be tidied up. Things will be more modular. Um, and so, we thought we'd implement the re-implement the ChipSeq pipeline from DSL one to two, and because I just released the, a version of the ChipSeq pipeline, it makes sense to now just port that pipeline directly to DSL two. Um, and so the aim was there not only to start adding modules to um, NF core uh, modules, but also to try and, and and implement them within the pipeline. So Gregor um, has done quite a bit of work on on updating our main readme on on NF core modules because it's become quite out of date and we're sort of, you know, changing these requirements as we go along essentially, just to, so we're clear about things. Um, Jose and Gregor also have been um, adding modules or, or attempting to add modules to NF Core modules with, um, for things like bed tools and sand tools. And I've made a list, there's an issue um, on the Chipsy repo with a list of modules we'll need to implement in DSL2 to get this working. Um, and so, yeah, it's just been it's just been a place you go. And and from some work that I'd done last week on the pipeline template, we've managed to strip out a lot of the boilerplate code that was in the template. Um, so I've been getting my Groovy on um, for the past few days, trying to create a separate Groovy library that we can then use to import specific functions for the NF Core template within the main script, as opposed to having big chunks of code in it. Um, and now it just it looks amazing. I mean, it's just incredibly satisfying delete, deleting large chunks of code from from the main script because we've been planning to do that for ages. And I think Paolo done some work on that for the RNA seq pipeline a while back, and Patrick done some more for the methyl seq, and we've sort of needed to bring it all together really. Um, but that would be quite nice because then um, it will not only simplify the boilerplate code for for the pipeline template, but um, we can then also use modules, which again is a condensed version of, of, of processes to, to even make things even that much more smaller. So yeah, so this, this slide is basically um, us talking lots at each other and trying to figure out how to go forward. Um, do you mind the next slide, please, Gisela? Thank you. Um, yeah, so Gregor's been working on this. Um, we've, I guess we've kind of been using this module as a test case to identify things we want to do and don't want to do with, um, with our modules. Um, and we're sort of making steady progress on that. And this is sort of the typical um, software people use as an example, really. So it's a good starting point. And Gregor was working on this. Next slide, please, Gisela. Um, so Rike is working on this, I believe, along with Maxime. Do you want to say something, Rike? Uh, yeah, this mo I'm pretty new to modules. I mean, I've heard about them for a long time, but basically yesterday was my first exposure to them. So I'm real glad about the talks today. And this morning we discussed which tools we need. And luckily there's a lot of overlap with the ChIP-seq pipeline on needed tools. And currently I'm fighting with figuring out how to create my own module with BWMM2 since we just this morning um, also added it to the SARIC pipeline to the current version. And Gisela has also done a lot of work, actually, I think, um, on Sarek. Yeah, I was mainly working on trying, because there is now a first version of the template for DSL2 in tools, thanks to Harshil. And I was contributing a tiny bit in the end. <laughs> so I was trying to also see how Sarek would look like with uh, based on the DSL2 template. Yeah, you, you got multi-QC working, which I couldn't, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> after a bit of fighting as well. <laughs> okay, so I think that's that's it for now. Um, I'm gonna stop the live streaming.
right now 